Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer on this Sunday, the 10th of January. Today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany, and today the Church observes the Baptism of our Lord. My name is Jim Gary, an Honorary Associate at the Church of the Ascension in London, Ontario, Canada. Before we begin our prayers this evening, I thought we might look back at this day and, and its meaning and what it has been in history. Today is observed as Bittersweet Chocolate Day, and that's something I can sink my teeth into. The more bitter the chocolate, the better I like it. And you can actually get chocolate that is 100% pure chocolate, no sugar added. Although I guess to qualify as bittersweet, it should be 99% or lower. And uh, I think the, especially the 99 and 100%, it has that bitter initial taste, but when you bite in and just let it dissolve on your tongue, it, it just becomes more and more sweet. As a child, I used to get into my mother's baking chocolate. And she said, you can't eat that. It, it, it's, it's for baking. It, you've got to add sugar to it. And I said, but I like it. And she said, I didn't think I could possibly like it. And to this day, if I can find the 99 or 100% uh, pure chocolate, I, I'm all for it. It's also House Plant Appreciation Day. Uh, the winter is that perfect time to bring a little bit of the outdoors indoors. Uh, flowering plants, uh, herb gardens perhaps, or, uh, or for those that don't have much luck with house plants, there's always cactus and other uh, succulents. Uh, just don't water them very often and they should do fine. Uh, I love, especially in the wintertime when we're able to travel, going into Allen Gardens over, uh, over in Toronto and just enjoying all the indoor plants. And I, I miss doing it this Christmas season. I've, I've been a good boy and I've been avoiding travel. Uh, let's look back in history. On this day in 236, Fabian, who was a farmer who happened to be visiting Rome, got himself elected Pope. He, uh, the tradition says that a dove landed upon him, and we'll say a little bit about that later. And uh, the people that were there, the cardinal said, yes, this is the person. He was a farmer just visiting town. He will serve until the year 250 when he will become one of the first martyrs under Decius, an emperor who was very hostile to the Christian faith. In 1514, the Complutensian New Testament was finished in Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Latin, was completed at Complutense University in Spain. 600 six-volume sets of this were printed, but only 123 are known to have survived to date. Uh, as, uh, as we look at the scripture in each translation, we learn a little bit more from it because each, each language has a little different way of phrasing things. And uh, it, it was an amazing uh, work. Uh, the university was known for translation and actually all of Spain was known at that time for the work in translation. In 1645, the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Loud, was beheaded under a bill of attainder from Parliament, notwithstanding having been granted a royal pro uh, pardon. Uh, William Loud strongly supported proper liturgical practices, and he was strongly opposed to Puritans and other dissenters. And in 1839, tea from India first arrived in the United Kingdom. Before that, the tea had come from China, had become very expensive, and the tea from India was a much more reasonable price. In 1946, the United General Assembly, United Nations General Assembly, met for the very first of time in Westminster House in London, England. The United Nations is, of course, an agency to work for peace in the world, a place where nations can come together and talk out their differences rather than fighting them out on the uh, fields of battle. Um, 
1961, when I was a high school student, there was a contest available in which one could write upon the value of the United Nations. I entered the contest and I won first prize, which was $50. I looked it up and those $50 would be worth $431 today. I saved it for another year and a half until I entered university. And with that prize, I was able to buy all my books for the first year of university. In 1984, actress Clara Peller first asked, where's the beef? In a commercial for the Wendy's hamburger chain. A little personal historical instruments, uh, uh, historical uh, reference. My wife and I happened to eat at the very first Wendy's restaurant in Columbus, Ohio, and it just happened to be on the day that it opened, Saturday the 15th of November, 1969. And we were served at the counter, counter by none other than Dave Thomas himself, never realizing how big the chain would become. This was just one restaurant at the time and how well known Dave Thomas would be. And in 1999, The Sopranos, starring James Gandolfino as mobster Tony Soprano, debuted on the HBO network. I had a dream this last week, and in that dream, I was in a steakhouse in Bayonne, New Jersey, eating steaks with the cast of The Sopranos. If you're into dream interpretation and want to tell me what that dream means, I would be happy to hear your interpretation. It wasn't a fearful dream. They were friendly to me. Huge steaks passed around on platters, lots of red wine, uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a good dream. I, I wasn't scared at all. I wonder what it means. Well, I think that's more than enough history for this day and that we should be turning now to our prayers. Oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that stand by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the holy place, and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Our psalm today is Psalm 89. It's one of the longer psalms, and we will be reading verses 19 to 29. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. And now we want to turn to Holy Scripture on this Sunday in which we remember the baptism of our Lord. We read from John, the first chapter, verses 29 to 34. We actually read these verses not that long ago, but they fit in now with this day as we do remember Jesus' baptism. The next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I have said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know him, 
But for this I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. And we can now talk about Jesus, about the baptism, and about everything that takes place here. It's, uh, it's a day, I think, to talk about two of the sacraments of the church, the primary sacrament, sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion. To think of our own baptism and what our baptism means. And every time we make the sign of the cross upon ourselves, it's an act of remembering that we have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting how our baptism uses only the simplest things. Water, one of the most common things on earth. Water, so much water. And we who live here in the Great Lakes region have more of the world's fresh water close to us than any place else in earth. And water is so common. We hardly go a day without drinking water in some form. Some say we should have six or more glasses of water a day to keep ourselves healthy. I kind of like my water with a little bit of tea and thought of that as we remember tea from India first going on sale in, uh, in Great Britain. It's uh, shared with, uh, with one of the church members online just recently. Uh, who would happen to have some milk spilled in a refrigerator. But the same day, I had managed to, uh, as I was taking the tea cozy off the teapot, it caught the lid of our classic lo beloved Brown Betty teapot, sent it spinning, and it crashed. Uh, my wife was able to find another one, a white teapot, at one of the local stores, but it's not the classic Brown Betty. I don't know how long I can go without a Brown Betty. But water is so common. Uh, our, uh, our baptismal right now includes the oil of chrismation, and I thought it interesting as we shared the psalm that, uh, that we heard about that. Uh, let me find that exactly. Uh, I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. And so we have water and we have oil now in our baptismal rite. And uh, I was saying in our Bible study on Wednesday that to me, baptism is, uh, is like taking a shower or a bath. And as the water comes upon us, it cleanses us. And it reminds us that baptism is an act of cleansing. We are cleansed from our sin. And when John looked at, at Christ, he said, behold, the Lamb of God identifying him in a sacrificial way and saying that he is the one who takes away the sin of the world. Not sins plural, but sin singular. The sin of the world, a rebellious nature against God. And some people, after having had a bath or a shower, like to put on moisturizing cream. And isn't it interesting how the oil of baptism is added to our water. We are cleansed and we are anointed with oil. It's a sign of remembrance of our baptism, remembering how the oil of anointing is so important in biblical times. And I said we'd be thinking about the sacraments, and I think of communion, and again, the simple elements there, bread and wine. As a poet said, a jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou a sense of completeness, and to thou in our baptism, of course, and in our communion is Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're baptism, baptized into the water of baptism, and so we're drowned with Christ and brought forth to new life. And in the Eucharist, we partake 
of the bread and the wine, and in so doing, receive the blood, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was listening to Reverend June's uh, homily in the, uh, in the service this morning on YouTube, and she mentioned one of the first baptisms that she had done, and it reminded me of a baptism in the parish I served in a little town in northern Ontario. And uh, it was of a girls, I remember, about eight years of age or so. Uh, parents approached me and said, you know, we never got around to having her baptized. I said, be happy to do so. And so the baptism was Sunday at church, and we gathered at the family home for a party afterward. And the, uh, the father of the little girl being baptized, I shouldn't say little because I said eight, nine, ten years old at the time, he said, I have some wine. And he said, I thought, you know, you're coming. He said, why not serve a wine you like? So one of his relatives worked at the, uh, at the uh, LCBO. We didn't have a beer store in town, and so the LCBO sold beer. And he just went in and spent. He said, we're baptizing my daughter today, and the, the preacher's going to be out for, uh, for dinner afterward. Uh, what kind of wine does he drink? Well, uh, the story is that fairly new in town, we had discovered that at the LCBO, you could order in wine. And so we went through the catalog and finding various things, and we found a particular burgundy we really liked. And so we ordered it in, and folks that were guests in our homes said, where'd you get this? And I said, well, you can order it in at the LCBO. Eventually, they made it a shelf item. But at this point, I guess we were just getting started, and uh, the answer was, well, the, uh, the wine that, uh, that we normally stock here is not good enough for your preacher. We have to order in special for him. But... Uh, we started bringing in some others because some other people said, gee, I had this great wine at the preacher's house. Just a little side story to share. But bread and wine, the meal of the Eucharist, as we receive the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know how it happens. It's one of those mysteries of faith and the waters of baptism in which we are cleansed, in which we are made clean, in which the sin of the whole world is forgiven. And in looking and saying, Behold the Lamb of God, John the baptizer didn't say, Here is the one who is your model of how to live life. He didn't say, Here is the one who will lead a perfect life. No, he identified him as the Lamb of God, the one who would be sacrificed. And so at the very beginning of his public ministry, the word had been made clear to him that he would be giving his life for all the world, not just a little bit of the world, not just those who lived in Galilee and Judea, but the whole world for the sin of the world. And so today, as we gather in this virtual way, to observe evening prayer, but are gathering with people from many places. And, you know, if, you've, uh, if you have not offered a like or a comment, I'm not fishing for likes or comments, but just let me know, because we're being seen by 15, 20 people a day, but the same cadre of 8 or 10 leave comments, and I'd really like to know how far we are reaching and how many people are taking part in this service. Uh, it, uh, if you can do that, I'd really appreciate it. So we post it on both my personal Facebook site and the church Facebook site. And uh, if, uh, if you could just leave me, if you're not a Facebook friend, that's okay. But if you're on the church site, and you can certainly find a church site, it's open. Uh, the uh, Church of the Ascension, London, Ontario. If you can do leave just a little note one way or another, I'd really like to know how far we are reaching. And I do know that I have friends in other parts of the world who have let me know that they are watching who haven't put uh, specifically on the church site or the, my personal site, but have let me know. And we are reaching many. I'd, I'd love for us to be able to reach more people. Uh, I, uh, I enjoy this opportunity to open up Holy Scriptures with you and to say prayers with you. And now I think we will turn again to our prayers and the prayer for this day as we remember the baptism of our Lord. Eternal Father, 
who with the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, keep your children born of water and the Spirit, faithful to their calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And because I don't make detailed notes for my preaching, I did remember what else I wanted to say when we consider that on this date in 236, Fabian, a farmer visiting Rome, was elected pope because, at least according to tradition, the cardinal saw a dove light upon him. It was at the baptism of our Lord that John recognized that this was the one that was to follow because, because he saw the dove land upon Jesus like a Holy Spirit. And he had been told to expect that, the one upon whom the Spirit comes. That is the one for whom you have been preparing the way. And a prayer for the evening. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy. Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remain with us, Lord, for the day is far spent, and evening is at hand. Kindle our hearts on the way, that we may recognize you in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And now I know you have brought your prayer concerns at this time, and I invite you to share them in this moment of silence. And now, in the language that you wish, and as our Savior has taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, and those you love, and those who you would pray for, now and forever. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me here by Fireside for evening prayer this evening. It's a little warmer here than it was outside last night. I like going outside, but I'll wait for a little warmer day. As spring will soon come, I just know uh, we'll join together outside again. Otherwise, we'll just move around a little bit inside. I thank you again. All of God's blessings. Go now in peace. May the God of peace go with you. Amen.